Is there any questions about Sight Yeah. Fishing? No questions? You know what that means? That means you I get to go really... home. <laughs> I got a question. Yes, yes, sir. You keep talking about flipping a Cinco. What is a Cinco? Uh, Cinco is a stick a stick bait, a soft plastic stick it's a bait. five-inch stick of plastic is what it is. Yeah, it's a very good surge bait. I keep them on uh, my rods. Right now, I'll tell you, uh, if you fish with me this time of year, I'm throwing a Cinco, a swim bait, or we're bed fishing. That's it. Um, That's it. And if you can't catch them on that, load the boat up and go home. Now, I know there's guys catching them on Carolina rigs, uh, but this time of year, I'm after big fish. Uh, this is a one time of year that I can go out and say, man, we're gonna go look for a true giant. If in the summertime we're out fishing a road bed or something, you don't know what's gonna bite that bait. But if I got a guy uh, and a lot of my customers sight, wanna come sight fishing, we'll go out hog hunting and, and I'll have them throwing like a Cinco or a swim bait uh, type bait. And, and a lot of times with that, it'll, it, you can catch those fish off beds that are a little deeper on a bait like that. Basically a, a fluke style bait, a zoom fluke or something like that. A Cinco is just a little bit heavier, it'll stay on the bottom a little bit longer, and a uh, fish absolutely eat it. So a lot of times what I'll do is, if, while I'm looking for a bed fish, I'll have my customers throwing out um, the, the other side of the boat. And here's another key that I, I think is a reason why we catch some big fish is, on this lake, if you watch people fish, they're all sitting out in about 10 foot of water throwing up to the bank. What I do, and it's just, it's worked for me, it's something different, is I get up on the bank and I have my customers throwing out to where most people's boat is sitting. I do the exact same um, thing. Because I'm looking for fish, uh, number one, but those fish that are up in that two, three foot of water, they've seen a lot of baits. They're up there for one reason, they're up there to spawn. Unless they're garden fry, you know, they're sitting on a bed and, and we'll catch them that way anyway. What I'm trying to do is have my customers catch those females that are out there in that eight to ten foot of water because that's where a female is going to sit before she goes up to bed a female when she gets ready to go to the bank she's ready to go to a bed um it, you, right now and a very 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 good key today is we went into little caney today and we went down one bank and i bet it had 10 or 15 males that were two to four pounds on it there was not one female on it well those fish aren't bedding there because there's no girls around those big females are sitting out where you can't see them so if you guys do that, get your bank right, get your boat right up against the bank and throw where most people aren't throwing. That'll help you catch a little bit bigger fish. That that's something I do, and I know it's hard to do because you think, man, I'm up here in this one to two foot of water, but you're actually fishing where the fish are instead of having your boat where the fish are throwing up to where the fish aren't. And a lot of times, and I don't know if you do this, but this is something I do. Sometimes if the other customer wants to watch, but you know we usually have two clients per day most days. And so we'll get up there and get on a bed fish and you've got a customer flipping to a bed and you're kind of talking through it. Well, the perfect thing for that guy to do on the back deck is to turn is to turn around and throw that sink out in the middle of no man's land out there to every stump he can see or even just fan cast it around randomly. And, and I even like to upsize and go to like a six inch stick bait and get a little bit bigger profile, something a little different than everybody else's sink which is a big deal, doing something slightly different out here. But... I can't tell you how many times, even though we're looking at big fish and we're looking for the biggest fish to catch, the biggest fish of the day comes in the middle of nowhere oh, off the back of the boat. Always. Guaranteed. Um, from a big one that's just not on a bed yet or, or just came off one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's... I, I'm a big believer in that. I, I see everybody going in there throwing okay. in. And, and again, people don't know. We're out here every day, so I know pretty much what the water's doing where I'm fishing. A lot of people don't. So I know that... You know where people are throwing it's one foot deep up there and, yeah. and they're just i'm just like man that's such a waste to cast but well, they don't know that but. and those fish that are on beds and committed to them man they're, sometimes they're kind of hard to catch if you're not looking at them mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent. so if you try that cast out a little bit deeper what, what color is the, the water the way it is dark green pumpkin i and so i used to throw white a lot when zach first met me and we <laughs> first went bed fishing together i threw white a lot and I was wanting, to, that's kind of the deal. So you can see the bait, you can see when the fish eats it. And, and one of the things that Zach helped me understand years ago now is, man, don't try to watch them eat it, feel them eat it. You're talking about bed fish, and I thought you were talking about Cinco. Well, I was talking about Cinco. Oh, oh okay. I'm, I'm yeah. talking about bed fish. I told you I'm obsessed. I'm both. I'm, I told right you I'm now, obsessed. Right now, with, uh, with the way the water color is, it's a little dingy, even down south. 
Uh, they are eating green pumpkin cinco better than I mean watermelons. Everybody's go to, but that green pumpkin's a little bit darker. Yeah, I've been um, throwing green with just some blue mixed in, like a blue flake or a blue swirl. But yeah, green pumpkin. Let the water clarity. I mean, right now the lake's a lot dingier than it has been in the last couple years. Um, and I don't know if it's because the wind, you know, the wind's switching on us, and that's that's what'll dirty the water up more than anything. It blows from the north, clears one spot up, and then it'll blow from the south and muddy it up. So, um, but in the watercolor right now, and I've had customers throwing watermelon. The green pumpkin is out fishing uh, the yep. watermelon, hands down. Even black and blue is not a bad idea right now in a lot of places. You know, pulling to an area and you feel like that water's even a little bit more dirty than some of the other stuff. Black and blue is not a bad idea. Especially on a bright day, that black and blue creates a real good silhouette falling down there when it's real bright. On the bed fishing bait, everybody wants to buy white. white. They sell white out before yeah. anything. <laughs> and I'm just not a big believer in white. I can vouch. I was a guy that used to throw white religiously so I could see them eat it, right? I'm I a, promise you I catch a lot more fish now that I don't throw white. It is, it, is a, it is a confidence deal. I have customers all the time that tell me, I can't see the bait. Well, I don't want you to see the bait. Because if you can see the bag, you're probably going to set that hook too soon. Mm -hmm. Everybody on this leg, when they first come to this leg, they flip a white bait on a bed. You know how many white baits fish have seen on a bed? <laughs> there's not a crawl worm out there unless there's albino crawfish that I have never seen that come across a bed that's white. So it's just, it's a so confident... what color are you flipping on the beds? Sir? What, what color? color? Um, I like a natural color. I, I've been flipping that color Red River Special. It's like a blue flag, but uh, Okeechobee Crawl, Red River yeah. Special, it's anything so natural. natural. Yeah. Uh, I want that. I want the least thing possible that could go wrong between me and that fish. I'm a big believer in that, so I feel like if I'm throwing natural colors, I have less of a chance that, that fish go, man, I saw that white bait 20 times before you got here. Yeah, most of the stuff I've been throwing has been a, a green base that I've even... I ran out of some green in the bait I was using, so I threw black and blue, and that works fine too. But the, I've got a boatload full of white, and I wouldn't put it on there if that tells you that. Color's not a big deal. It's just a shade. I mean, I feel like the it's fish green. just see too much white. Another reason I do it is I don't watch the fish eat it. Um, I, I let the fish. I, I watch the fish eat it because I can see them, but I don't want my customers to see that fish eat it. I want to tell my customers she's got it because if they can see it eat it, it's just. <laughs> You know, and I don't want that. I want her to be comfortable in there. A lot of times I'll see the line tick or, you know, watch her open her mouth um, before I tell the customer to set the hook. There's it's so just, many nuances to, to bed fishing. It's people, a lot of times people may think it's easy. It's not. There's a, to do it at a high level. It's the hardest thing on the lake to do. So many little things. And, uh, you know, I tell people this all the time, you know, they'll feel that fish thump it and they'll swing. And I'm like, no, she was just biting and spitting. You didn't need to swing. And this is what I tell them. If a fish will bite it and spit it, she'll bite it and spit it again. But if a fish bites it and while she's spitting it, you rip it away from her, she might not bite again. You might spook her real bad. So always check them up. When, that, when you feel that thump, hold it for a second. Try to feel tension. Really what I want you to feel is movement. If, if you got that line, just, just light tension on that line, and you feel that fish move its head a little bit or move to the side a little bit, now you've got her set the hook. Now, once you decide to set the hook, do it as fast as possible because there's a good chance she's not going to hold it that long. But, yeah, make sure she's got it before you set the hook because if she's biting and spitting, she's going to bite again unless you mess her up. Yeah, and you jerk it away from her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, and that's what I mean by messing her up. Like, if you jerk it while she's still got, like, it's coming out of her mouth, it, that can spook her real bad. And it can turn them off. I've if you it. if you've ever watched a fish eat an aquarium, I know I've I've talked to Billy about this on his show and stuff. If you ever watch a fish eat an aquarium, he doesn't come up there and gum that worm. The tick that you guys are feeling when you're worm fishing or throwing a cinco or a fluke is the back of that bait hitting that fish's throat. It's not the lips on that bait. I can promise you. If you ever watch a fish eat an aquarium, he'll come up. She'll come up to it and just. And what they what you're feeling uh, is the bait hitting the back of that throat, and they can uh, spit it out just as fast as they can suck it in. So I watched a bed fish yesterday. She just before my customer even knew before what was you going can blink on. An eye. It happens. Fast. And he said, "I felt her hit it. Yeah, you felt it hit the back of her throat." And by the communication of me telling him to set the hook, I bet we missed that fish seven times before he finally stuck it. So when you guys are worm fishing or bed fishing or anything, when you're feeling that tick on that bait, people ask me all the time. When I feel that tick, do I set the hook away? And I'm like, Billy, you know, I want a little tension because if that fish sucks it in and spits it back out, she's going to eat it again. 
A hundred percent. Yes. A lot of times the very next flip. Yeah. Usually. Usually. People, the biggest misconception about when people are worm fishing or whatever, they think when they feel that tick, they're letting that, that fish is gumming it. A fish does not gum your bait. No. She's sucking that bait in from probably one foot or six inches in front of her a lot of times. So I always, I, you'll see me, I'll sit there and a lot of times I could pull them to the top of the water. Like if I'm on a, if I'm on a female and a male and I see that male hitting a bunch, I'll raise my rod up and pull that male out of the bed and then get it back in there as soon as I can so that female's in there aggressive. Because a male will always usually be more aggressive than a female. And, and one more tip, we've gone into every detail I can imagine, <laughs> but let's one more that i found that's been working for me really well this year. You know, the traditional learning is try to not catch the male. Try If the male bites, try to shake him off so you can catch the female. Or I've also heard catch the male and put him in your live well. <laughs> That's the worst thing you That's can do. That's the worst thing you can if do. If that male's not around, some females, if they're overly aggressive, will get up on the bed. But most of them, when that male's not there, they ain't going back. They'll go try to To find me, the best male. thing you can do, it, shaking it off, okay. If you want to try and shake it off and try that, that's fine. But that male's just going to keep biting a lot of times. The, what I've found that's worked the best is pop that male, give him the boat fast as you can, unhook him, throw him back fast as you can. Now he's going to be sore mouthed and he's going to go back to that bed. But when you flip that bait in there, he's not going to nose up on it. And she's going to be like, well, um, aren't you going to do something? And then she's going to get up there and, and do something. And we had one this week. We had to catch an eight pounder. We had to catch the male two times before we caught her. So we caught him twice, threw him right back. He kept going back. And eventually she got to where it was frustrating her that he wasn't getting on the bed now after we caught him twice and she went up there and ate. Mm -hmm. so, yep, that's the deal. That's, uh, that's sight fishing. I mean, it's a, it, it, if you ever get a dick to it, my customer today, he, he was a... <laughs> He was an army sergeant, army sergeant in the uh, army for 22 years, and uh, we were fishing. We caught a couple of bed fish, and he said, "Man, he said they gotta have an alcoholic anonymous for Lake Fork." He said, "I'm addicted to this lake." I'm telling you, and it's just it's something if you guys get good at, you can catch them on the really tough days. And you're limited to the time of year you can do it, so it may like all year you think about it, and you're like, "Man, I can't wait till this bed fish." It, it's a really good way. I, I, on Billy's show last year, I told people. I started I started bed That's fishing in two years, you know, you know that? Has it? Yeah, years. I started uh bed fishing in tournaments because I felt like if I could go out and find five of the right fish, I didn't need to catch thirty fish. Everybody will tell you tournament game is how many fish you can boat. Yeah. Not this time of year. If I could go out and find five big fish, that's the only five bites I need. And, and it's a really good way to catch yeah. big fish this time of year. That, that's really one, big fish. That, that's the only reason I was good at tournaments in March and April, because I can't catch very many fish. So <laughs> I had to do it when I could only catch five and still win, you know? But man, yeah. Zach, that was Absolutely. awesome. Any more questions? Anybody got any Zach questions? Here? No, yes, sir. No, 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 I'm not saying that, man. Absolutely, you can. Just if you get a fish, um, the first the first week they move up, anything will catch them. A, a lot of guys throw white so their customers can see it. I, I'm a big believer in whatever you have confidence in, man. Um, I'm just not a, I, I'm not a white guy because I, I don't want my customers to see the fish eat the bait a, a lot of time. But if you're having trouble on a real dingy day, Seeing a fish, why you could catch a fish on anything. I, I tell the story all the time. We were in a, a farm pond uh, in East Texas one time, and a buddy bet me cheeto. a be, a buddy bet me I couldn't catch a fish on a Chester Cheeto, <laughs> and I hooked a Cheeto, no kidding, on a Texas rig hook and caught that fish. So bait color is not a big deal. It's just whatever you want confidence in, man. You know, yeah, anything like that. Anything like that. It's, yeah, I'm not saying don't use it. So a lot of guys use it, man. Absolutely. It's just whatever you have confidence in. Well, so. man, that's all. Any more questions for Zach, guys? Well, Zach, I can't thank you enough for coming by to do these with us. And Absolutely. I wanted to get you up here and brag on you a little bit. No, that, don't do that. I got yeah, lucky, man. Back-to-back -back double-digit <laughs> days, man. You, you can say it's luck, but... That's something nobody's done in a long time that I've heard of. Absolutely. And that's absolutely incredible. Man, congratulations Thank to you and your clients for that. Everybody, let's give Zach a big round of applause. Thank you, Zach. Absolutely. I tell everybody when I come and do these things, man, I'm not a real keep secret kind of guy. So I feel like there's no secrets on Lake Fork anymore. Um, I would rather see you guys catch uh, double digits than me or some of the guys. Yeah. Uh, so if you guys ever have any questions, uh, you're coming to the lake and you want to say, hey, man, where are they biting at? I'll tell you north, south. I probably won't tell you what cut they're in.
but I'll say, hey, they're betting really good on the north end. I, I'm a big believer that if we keep you guys happy at Lake Fork, you guys are what pay our bills. So uh, I'm not a real tight-lipped uh, guy. If you guys have, huh? Which end, north or south? Right now, I'd be in the middle right now. It, That's not what you said. What? You said north or south? <laughs> well, <laughs> south then, because okay. I'm south fish or fresh. What we yeah. call, what we said, what uh, we call north or south is both arms run like this. The north or south. If the wind always blows from the south, it's blowing straight from the dam. Uh, Little Canyon, does that help you out? Um, just because we fished north yesterday and a lot of the fish were already spawned out, they've already gone through their first wave. And I don't know if you're here, but those fish transition down the lake. The warmest water is always in the north arms of the lake. Uh, and, and then it'll cool, it'll warm up down south. So uh, I went up north yesterday and we caught a bunch of post spawn fish. And when you're sight fishing, that's not always the best thing to do. We went down south today, little caning area, and we caught some fish that still had eggs in them. And, and, and again, sight fishing, man, they go in waves. You'll hear people talk, when's the second wave coming? What happens is, the first warm days of the spring, um, I've caught bed fish on this lake as early as uh, uh, Valentine's Day in February because we had a real warm winter. But this year, was Not little, this year. <laughs> this year was a little colder, so the, the yeah. first wave didn't move up pretty much till last week. Um, well, we had so many fish ready to go, they all went at once. Last Thursday and Friday, like I said, I was in Glade Creek and there was a fish on every single bed. And you'd catch them, and there would be another one pull up. That's how ready to go they are. This week we went up there and there weren't many fish on the bed, so I started looking south and a lot of those fish had started. Um, but if I was going out tomorrow, I would go to Little Caney uh, and you'll just find a little bit bigger females. Now, next week when we get that uh, new moon or whatever, that second wave will hit. I keep going back to Glade every day to look and, and see when they're going to come up, but yep. they're just not up yet. But they're coming. There's another wave. They're always... Yeah, yeah there's they always go, multiple waves. There's about three waves usually on Lake Fork, sometimes four. In um, every area. Yeah. So it, it, you can fit, you can pattern this lake every year. They do it the same. Start north, fish them down south through the first wave. Then when the second wave, go back north, fish them down south. Yeah. Um, but man, if you guys have any questions, if you ever need anything around here, uh, if I'm not with a customer, I'll answer your call and I help you out any way I can. Okay. I appreciate you guys coming to the lake, coming to these things. All lake right. Guide, ZachHughes.com. If you're looking for him, look him up on the internet. Zach, yes, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you guys. Good luck to y'all. Now, is Ronnie Kelly still in the building? We may have lost him because me and Zach started talking about sight fishing and it was like, it just kept going and it kept going. Look, he's here. And I don't even like sight fishing. It's, it's easy. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was good. That was, that was good. There's a lot to it. I, I think um, there's a lot of little stuff. Like it looks easy on the surface, but then you get out there and you start doing it. And when you get these fish on this lake that have seen it all, there's a lot of little. I'm not. I'm not it. much of a sight fisherman. I, I kind of look at it a, a little bit different. Um, I feel like sight fishing is um, in times you, you you can waste a lot of time, especially this guy right here because he gets addicted to him. He becomes a grudge. So what I want to talk to you about briefly. So we One more thing about sight fishing before we take off on whatever we're going to island. Yeah. Talking about that. Glasses are. In I've fished all different kinds of glasses. Um, I've been fishing these for years. I am working with amphibia now, but I wasn't for the last two springs that I fished these glasses. Uh, Costas, Oakleys, a lot of different types of glasses. These are the best sight fishing glasses. This is the amphibia Baja lens, and that's an amber lens. That lens is important. Uh, day in, day out, cloudy, sunny. Just if you just want to buy one pair of glasses to sight fish with, Amphibia Baja lens, in my opinion, is the very best, and they float. So that's another reason I like them because I've got some coasters that are somewhere. If y'all catch them, <laughs> send them back to me. But these float. I haven't lost them yet. So all right. So I, I'm going to talk to you briefly about um, the fish that are coming, the fish that are going. Um, I kind of break I break these creeks and things down kind of like I do us. So we're on the interstate, right? Which is like your main creek. And then when we're fixing to go to the gas station, we hit the little service road, yeah. right? Which is like a little feeder creek. Let's say, let's take White Oak. Does everybody know where White Oak is? All right, it's right out here. There's three little creeks. You got, I don't even know how they name them, but you got three little creeks that are White Oak, okay? So they're gonna start on this big main lake point. Are y'all, is, is everybody kind of familiar with what I'm talking about? If you're not, 
you got a major creek you got a major creek that goes over there and it splits into three little fingers okay mm -hmm. and on the left side you've got a major main lake point it's got a big clay bluff to it okay that's a great pre-spawn spot those fish are going to pull up out of the off the main lake and they're going to pull up on that point and they're going to feed okay then they're going to move back out into the into the creek going into wide oak and they're going to move up again and then they're going to move up on those two little points that are going to be right here and right here okay um, in fact the one on the left i call eight pound point because when you pull up there this time of year and they're there you're probably going to catch eight pounder so this time of year, and, and even earlier than this, early into February, uh, mid-February, this year is a little bit later. We're about a month behind, a month and a half behind. Generally, by about the mid-February, uh, I'm actually throwing my frog, throwing my buzz bait, catching those fish. This this year, I didn't start catching frog fish until about two, three weeks ago. Um, so I'm going to pull up on those points. The, the, the main baits that I'm going to use are Carolina Rig. All right, I'm going to throw a Carolina Rig Fluke, a Cinco, a Big Lizard, um, something similar to that. I'm going to throw a swim bait. Now, when I throw a swim bait, it's going to be several different ways. I'm not throwing Alabama rig. Um, those fish are going to be on these points, and they're going to be what we call staging. And they're going to sit off these, the front of these points, and they're going to feed. And when they're off those points, they're eating. The females aren't going to do a whole lot of eating. The males aren't either. So when they get onto the beds for these guys to pluck them off, they're not eating. Um, and so when you catch those fish, and, and why white does work, um, which I don't use white either. I, I hate using white. I use green pumpkin, Okeechobee cross, something like that. But why white does work is because they're not eating. Those fish have no interest in eating. And my rule of thumb is no matter how good you can visually see, bass look up. So if you can see them at any point, there's a good chance they can see you. So, so white, pink, black, blue, green pumpkin, it doesn't matter. I like the more natural because the same thing Zach said is there's not a whole lot of white things going out here. But people that do use them and you, we can't sit up here and, and discredit white or pink because there's so many pros that use it but for me personally I like green pumpkin black and blue Okeechobee cross something like that because it's more natural but anyways back to this deal so they're going to feed and they're going to sit in those staging areas yeah so they're going to they're going to sit on those staging areas and they're going to really feed and that's when these females start to get really fat um, their metabolism is really really low they're not moving a lot um, the water's still cold they're looking for they're, they're looking for opportunities to eat big bait those points taper and they have the opportunity to kind of move up and move down, move up and move down. High skies, warm days that warm the water surface up, they'll move up. A jerk bait comes into play a lot, an Alabama rig, a big swim bait. Um, a Carolina rig is a really good bait and uh, there's some, some of the guides on this lake uh, that'll get on that pre-spawn Carolina rig bite. And, and if that deal goes down, unless I have the ability to run around and find like five, seven to nine pound fish, um, that guy's gonna beat me because he's gonna he's probably gonna catch five out here's five seven to who knows pound fish on that pre-spawn bite now the beauty of a pre-spawn bite this time of the year late March is once they get done moving into those creeks and spawning they come back out to those points like to go back what down. Zach was talking about earlier how that first wave on the north end is yeah. kind of wrapping up those fish are now starting to get back out on like the points and stuff like yeah. that he's talking about and go ahead because I know where you're going. Yeah, now you and got so now you've got them intersecting. Now, now you got fish coming, which are are big fat fish, and you got fish going, which are scissor bellies. And so you've got both of those fish. Now they're both doing the same thing. They're both feeding. Um, and the reason that that's such a big deal, and this is so so important this time of year, is you've got one thing happening now. You've got shad that are spawning. Your bigger shad, your gizzard shad. They're starting to move up on those points and trying to spawn. Um, something, something else is about to happen. That water starts hitting that right at 70, 67 to 72 degrees, you know, 70 degrees right in there. The thread fin shad, which are your flicker shad or whatever, um, they're going to start to move up in those points. Now, they're going to spawn in different areas as well. They'll spawn in grass. They'll spawn on boat docks. They'll spawn on trees. But they're going to really congregate on those windblown points as well, those hard... Even um, around grass and stuff, it yeah. seems like they seem to relate to wind blown points they do they even they, if there's grass they'll find like it, the windiest point in the grass and it has yeah. yeah for sure in lily pads uh yeah my nephew's here we've been fishing together our whole lives and, and i'll tell you this this is something pretty pretty neat and i don't know if you've ever thought about this when when we were kids we'd go to purse creek my brother used to take his purse creek a lot has anybody ever fished purse creek nobody's, nobody's ever fished purse creek nobody purse creek 
awesome. Man, it's awesome. <laughs> you know, if you said that's good, it's y'all terrible. just stay gone. It used to be really, really good, and it's catch and release only. So when we were kids, we would launch the boat. My brother, his dad, would take us to the very back of the lake. It would just be a lily pad field. And I can remember as a, as a kid, we would throw sluggos, and the shad would just be up on top of the lily pads. You remember that? And so when I was probably, uh, man, I was young, but I was at Lake Tyler, and I pulled to the back of these pads one day. And the shad were just everywhere. It sounded like Rice Krispies. They were just everywhere. And the bass were just, and I mean, the shad were on top of the pads. I mean, you'd see a hundred shad flickering. And so those shad were spawning in those lily pads. Um, and, and the bass were in there just losing it. I mean, as you can imagine, you got a free, easy meal. And so that's about to happen. So when you get on that, and usually by this time, that's going on. Usually by this time, we've got 70 degree water. And so Facebook's pretty cool because it brings up memories. And I'm watching, I'm like, dude, I remember that. We were on that point, you know, throwing a square bill or a Zara spook or whatever, swim bait. And uh, I remember, you know, we're catching fish that are eight pounds that are 24 inches long. And we're catching fish that are eight pounds that are 22 inches long because we got them coming and we got them going. Um, and so, you know, when you're looking for that, some of the, some of the key elements are, are birds. And I know Mike McFarland talks a lot about birds, but birds are a really big deal. Um, but windblown points are a really big deal. Um, your spawning coves that you really like to fish in, that you've got a lot of confidence in, that these fish are going to be in, those main lake and secondary points are going to have, those fish are going to be there. Whether you see them or whether you catch them, they're going to be there. They could be shallow up on the points, especially if there's wind and there's cloud cover. They could be backed off the points. Um, we actually fished the dock today, and when I fished it the last two days, um, that's there's a point that sticks out with a dock sitting over here. Well, that dock's had some big fish on it. And the reason that dock's had some big fish on it is those fish are staging on that point to pull into this pocket to spawn. They're using that dock exactly how they would trees. When that sun gets up, they're rising up and down or they're coming up and down on that dock. And so I'll throw a, a scrounger head with like a, a big fluke or a swim bait or something like that um, and fish it real slow on those points. That's where I throw a jerk bait a lot. Uh, Alabama rig is, is maybe the best bait. Um, something that's going on out here that you're going to see a lot of the guides on Facebook talk about is big swim baits. Um, it's the same exact thing. Those are staging fish. Those are fish that are feeding up and they're looking for big meals. Um, their metabolism is not sky high. It's, it's getting there because the water's getting into the 60s, but it's not, you know, they're not just losing their mind running all over the place. So they're, they're trying to find big, easy meals. Um, and this lake's full of big, easy meals. Um, and then there, the restaurants right here are full of big easy yes. meals too. Yeah, for sure. So this is a body built by Marina food right here, boys. That's a good body, dude. Yeah. That is, man. I'd right. much rather have a keg than a six pack. Hey, right, skinny's plenty, but fat's where it's at. Yeah, that's right. Um, so uh, you know, you, you've got both a square bill crankbait, a big crankbait. If I throw a big crankbait, I'm I'm fishing it really slow. So we're talking about shad spawn, kind of is that kind of what we're talking about. We're talking bit? about we're talking about pre spawn, but the deal is. The shad spawn's about to happen. It's about to happen. So yeah. you're going to be out there right now throwing that, dragging that Carolina rig, um, and those fish are going to be piled up, and you're going to still catch some really fat fish because we have the majority of these fish have not moved up to spawn. That's true. Um, One thing I want to th- so when the shad do start spawning, and you start like, like the biggest deal is looking for the herons on the wind blowing points mm-hmm. when the thread pin starts spawning and all that kind of stuff. But the square bill, let's talk about that for a second because that's a, that's a big deal, and, and I don't know half of what you know about it. You've been throwing that square bill on Shad Spawn deal a lot longer than I have, but in my head, the way I kind of process it is, you go over there and you got that Shad Spawn point, you go over and you're catching fish, and you can throw a top water bait, or you can throw a high riding, you know, weedless weightless swim bait that stays up high, and you're just catching those fish and you're catching them real good, but that square bill gets down under that right. initial group, and boy, you just seem to catch a bigger fish. Yeah, for sure. And, and the shad spawn, the reason I don't, I, would, I didn't, wasn't going to get into the shad spawn is because this year the shad spawn is going to be really unique because we have so much grass. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be a lot different than uh, years past, 2011, 12, 13, when the lake was six, seven, eight foot low. The shad really didn't have a place to spawn. They spawned on boat docks and they spawned on points and bridge corners. This year it's yeah. going to be different. Like 2015, um, when Chris Lane got second place to uh, Brent Ayler. There was a whole lot of shad spawn going on early on. He was catching frogfish. Horny toes a good bait. A buzz bait's a good bait. Um, a skinny dipper is a really good bait. And I say skinny dipper versus um, uh, 
Um, what's the one that he makes that we throw? The puzzle? No. Convict? No, the... Uh, smash tail? Yeah, smash tail. I say skinny dipper versus smash tail because smash tail is a little different bait. The skinny dipper is a fast moving bait and it gets more of a reaction strike during the chat spawn. But that's that's going to be a little later on. That water temperature still got almost 10 degrees. Yeah, that's know. still a ways to go. Yeah. There are fish on the south end that have not moved up. That Those points on Little Caney, um, some of the points that you and I fished in uh, the creek we fished, that are secondary points, main lake points. Those fish that you're seeing, some of the guys catch that are look like they're about to explode, those are pre-spawn fish that have not even moved into the creek channels to move up. So they're going to get up the points, they're going to pull up the creeks, they're going to drive up the surface road, then they're going to go up to spawn, they're going to come back down and do the same thing again. So that those points, whether it be main lake or whether it be every little point going back into the creek, my nephew pulled into a pocket today and caught a big one on a, um, a bait, and right where he caught it, there's a little point, and that little point's a pre-spawn point. Even though the pocket may not be any bigger than this little room we're in, if there's a point over there, and those fish, and you're at Lake Fork right now, and those fish are not spawning in there, they're on that point. That's right. They're either on that point or they're in that ditch. But more than likely, there's going to be some fish. on. If they're in that ditch, you take a swim bait or a chatter bait or something like that and throw it down that ditch to about 25, 30 casts, and you don't catch one, they're on that point. 100% of the fish are going to be on points before they go into the, into the pockets to spawn. So when we're talking about pre-spawn swim baits on these points, or pre-spawn fishing on these points, for the guys that want to go out and try to catch a big one on a swim bait, let's talk a little bit about the poacher because we've hyped it up coming into this. The poacher and the convict. Yep. And both of them. Yeah, they're both good. Um, and so on the poacher, A, it's just, it's a little bit smaller, so it's a little bit easier to handle if you're not a big swim bait guy. If you're a big swim bait guy, go grab that convict, right. go do work like you know it can do. But if you're not a big swim bait guy and you want to get into it, the poacher is like ideal because it's a little bit shorter. Yeah, it's a little really good. Bait. Talk to us about how you're rigging it for the pre-spawn bite. So on the pre-spawn bite, those fish, I'm wanting those fish to come up. So I'm throwing, I'm actually throwing on an dot owner um, flashy beast hook. And so that, that, that flash is to get those fish to kind of come up. 25 pound cigar, 710 or 8 foot. I'm throwing a Kistler extra heavy rod with a 6-3 to 1 reel. Um, and that's just so I can, I have the ability to slow down. Um, the difference the difference between me throwing that poacher on a flashy swimmer and an unweighted hook is depth. I'm throwing it on an unweighted that hook. That was my next question. Is when yeah. do you go to the weightless hook? I go to the, I go to the weightless hook with tape weights when I'm looking for fish that are trying to spawn or that are so shallow. If that, if that wind's blowing up there and I throw that swim bait up there and I'm dragging and I'm getting slime and I can't keep that, that blade clean or that hook clean, then I'll switch to a, a weightless Hook. But I'm throwing that when I'm throwing that weightless hook. I'm doing the same thing these guys were talking about, where they're on the bank and they're they're going down the bank throwing out. I'm doing I'm staying right here, and if this is my bank line, I'm parallel in the bank with that with that weightless swim bait, and I'm catching the I bed fish. In fact, this gentleman here fishing me today. We bed fished all day, but we only sight fished once, and we caught several fish off beds, and we caught some nice fish off beds, but we're not actually getting up there looking at them. You know, swim baits. Um, frogs, prop baits, um, poppers, cinco's, flukes. He caught a nice fish on a fluke this morning. We couldn't get him to eat a frog in my starting spot. He threw a fluke out there, said cast, caught a nice one. But on the pre-spawn deal, I'm I'm really wanting those fish to come up. If if it's cloudy or something like that, I might throw it uh, on a weighted hook and just really really slow roll it and kind of keep it just lower in the water column, you know. Um, but if, it, if I've got a sunny day, if I've got a sunny no wind day, which tends to be the toughest day. The two baits that I'm with are Carolina rig, and, it, and I don't have a big preference on bait. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't think it matters a whole lot. I don't, fish aren't that smart. They can't. I mean, most of us don't know the difference between a lizard and a baby brush they, hog. They labeled the package on the baby brush hogs. They labeled them wrong. Yeah, it should be Carolina rig bait. That's right. That's but, what it's supposed to say. Zoom Carolina rig bait. But they and, I, and I throw a Carolina rig uh, or a jerk bait. Or an Alabama rig. I love an Al I think an Alabama rig bait is so good it should be illegal. But um, it is. It's yeah, it's, man, it's so good. Um, if I've got some wind or something like that, then I might throw a swim bait with like a wobble head, you know, a uh, scrounger head or an underspin. I don't throw an underspin a lot out here. I used to, but that's more of a cold water deal. But um, the big thing is right now, every one of these points that those pockets that are not full of bed and fish, those fish are on those points. These Mustangs, all these points out here, uh, Cheney, all these points have fish on them. All of them have fish on them. 
Um, going in the Northwest Bay, all that stuff, all those points are loaded up with fish. You can pull up here with Carolina Rig, and probably if you if you're looking for numbers right now, you take a baby brush hog on a, on a one ounce Carolina Rig with a three or four or five foot leader, and pull up to any of these little points that have got root systems. I call them sticker stumps because everybody gets stuck on them, but they got the root systems are real hard. You're gonna catch fish. You're gonna catch bucks, and you're gonna catch. You're gonna eventually run wind, into. Wind is a factor for that. You you want to fish the you, windy ones, right? You do, you know? but you don't have to. I'm, and I'm talking, you know, the days that are tough when it's bluebird and it's slick calm, and you can't buy a bite. You can still move out to those points, and you can throw a Carolina rig and catch plenty of fish. You may not pull out there and catch a forty pound bag, but you're gonna catch a lot of fish. So I wouldn't know because I'm addicted to bed fishing. He's so. addicted to bed fishing, <laughs> and I bed fish. I mean, this gentleman fish with me today. We bed fished all day. Uh, we just do it a little bit different. Yep. And we'll talk about that later on. All right. Later on. <laughs> later on. <laughs> we, we've been catching some biggins on something, so we'll talk about it later. Yeah. On. Yeah, it's been a lot of biggins getting caught out here. That's just, sure. It's an unbelievable. Unbelievable. There's unbelievable. no doubt. Unbelievable. Falcon <laughs> can't compare, man. It's just it's just Falcon's awesome, but this place it's is, unreal. we call it the Goat Lake, and I had a, an older gentleman talk to me at lunch at Oak Ridge this week, and he asked me, what does Goat Lake stand for? And I had to explain to him, we call it the Goat Lake because it stands for greatest of all time. G-O-A-T, Goat Lake. And it is. And there's not like 100%. a close second. There's no debate. Like, there's no other lake that kicks out the amount of double-digit fish or just the amount of seven-plus pound fish no. that this lake kicks out. I mean, we had a 35-pound bag sight fish in it at the beginning of the week, and it was like, I, I was excited about it. It was a really good day. But it should have been better, and I didn't have any double digits in the bag, so I was like, well, it wasn't that great. And it's like that, you, think about anywhere you go in the world, you catch 35 pound bag, people are like, you did what? Yep. And out here, I'm a little bit, like, there's a little bit of disappointment in it, you know? I, I shouldn't it's say that because I wasn't disappointed, but y'all know what I mean. I mean, yeah. it's unbelievable the amount of big fish that come out of here. Really, one more thing to speak to that is a lot of you probably know we have the Fish Life app that we're always keeping updated. It's an app, with fishing spots with detailed information on what type of area that spot is, what type of baits to use there, and we're constantly updating it and all that. We have had an unbelievable amount of big fish pouring in on the Fish Life app. Uh, I think there's been four or five double-digit fish caught from app users on Lake Fork alone. Um, the app users are catching bigger we fish watched, than I am. We saw somebody <laughs> pull in on one of the uh, app ones today. We saw somebody pull in, and then he caught an eight and a half, almost eight and a half pounder, and then he caught... Yeah. Uh, eight and a half pounder, eight and a quarter. I mean, it's le it's legit, guys. Same, if you're not using area. it, uh, if you don't know about it, I highly encourage you to check it out. It's Fish Life. Life is spelled with a Y, L Y F E. It's on the uh, App Store for iPhone. It's on the Google Play Store for Google. We also have a web app uh, at fishlife.net that you can use on all device types, and you can download it for free. Check it out. Uh, and if you want to subscribe to Lake Fork, subscribe to it. Uh, it's twenty dollars a month for Lake Fork. And it always has spots getting changed. We're actually going to change some either tonight or tomorrow night, whenever I can get with my partners that actually run the back end of that thing and get those spots changed. And uh, it's it's a big sense of pride for me because we worked for a long time trying to put this thing together. There's a lot you know invested in it to get it up and running. And man, is it working! It is so cool to me to see these guys that are this weekend guys get to come out here once a week or whatever, once a month. And, yeah. They're using this app and it's putting them on the biggest fish of their life. You know, it's really cool, really cool. So, any questions of any kind, if anything, you want to find, ask us why he smells so weird sometimes, or anybody catching fish on frog this week? Smelly Kelly, that's right. <laughs> oh, nephew knows. He know he gets it. <laughs> He's stupid. <laughs> I used to beat him up all the time, <laughs> but I don't be beating him up no more. Though. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Well, guys, I know it's been a long one tonight. We, we went long with Zach, and Ronnie kind of kept it brief, and we appreciate him for that. But, man, if y'all ever need anything, just let us know. We're here to help. We truly are passionate about helping everybody catch us, you know, more and bigger fish, and uh, that's what we're here to do, and that's why we take the time out of our schedules to do all this stuff. And we really appreciate all you guys for coming and staying with us tonight. Almost everybody stayed to the end. So thank you all. Thank Lake Fort Marina for hosting for us. They do an amazing job giving us the facility they do. So thank them, and I guess we'll see you all next time right here on Your Lake Fort Guide. Young clap if you want to, young just get him leave. <laughs> <laughs>